That really is why people move on from relationships so often. But if you have a relationship where differences still abound, mm -hmm. where you help produce in each other new clarity about what you prefer mm -hmm. so that you have a dynamic active relationship, mm -hmm. then it can be eternal. Mm -hmm. But if you can ever get so compatible and so same and so aligned in every idea about everything, then this relationship has no more potential to produce expansion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I understand that and I see the beauty and she has helped me grow tremendously. What happens so often is instead of embracing that difference in a, in a non-defensive way, mm -hmm. most are defensive because mm -hmm. most people, and it's so screwy, but most people when they encounter someone, especially someone up close to them who they love very much, when they encounter a difference in a, of opinion in someone like that, their usual knee-jerk response is to become defensive. Mm -hmm. And in their defensiveness, they immediately lose their connection, connection mm -hmm. with their own clarity, their own source. They, they're no longer in the receiving mode. Mm -hmm. So, of course, your goal is to remain in the receiving mode while you are acknowledging your differences. Mm -hmm. And it's a little tricky, but it's only tricky because as humans, you have developed patterns of defense. Mm -hmm. Like if someone doesn't agree with me, then I need to get them on board with me instead of understanding the value of the varying perspectives. Mm -hmm. When you come together collectively as a group, th there are not two of you that are the same. You are, you, are, you are so varied in your approach to life, which makes you collectively really, really good for one another mm -hmm. because Without variance or difference, you could not produce new ideas. So rather than feeling defensive about, about anything, mm -hmm. instead what you're wanting to do is acknowledge that there is advantage in it. And that's what we've been calling step five. Yeah. Step five is realizing that you are, you are having some contrast and that you are aware of some contrast, but at the same time that you are having some contrast, mm -hmm. you are not out of the vortex in the contrast. And mm -hmm. that, that's what we're asking you. Do you think you can do? Can you, can you, be, can you be aware of something not wanted mm -hmm. and still be in vibrational sync with your inner being. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the way you do it is by acknowledging the value of the contrast, by appreciating okay. the value of the contrast. Now, there I, is value in contrast. There is va so, so you say, thank you very much. I hadn't looked at it in that way. I'll think about that. I may not ever agree with you completely, but I, I like that we have a broader view. Mm -hmm. I do see the value in contrast and early on I used to like if she would say something that would hurt my feelings like, or something. Like what? I used to fight fire with fire. But well, that most work. do. That's that, <laughs> that's defensiveness. Yeah, that's but defensiveness. that's just but that but but you can't push against yeah. anyone without being off in the wilderness apart from your own inner being. Yes. So so when you fight fire with fire, yes. what happens is you leave your true power mm -hmm. and you wage a battle that that you're not winning even when you're winning. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and and the reason that most who are fighting fire with fire or who are fighting at all, the reason that most get more and more belligerent about it or more and more strong about it is because you have a unconscious, maybe, maybe conscious awareness that you've stepped out of your energy zone, out of your power zone, out of your true leverage zone, and now you're trying to make up for it through the action and the words, which are never very strong, mm -hmm. but it's what makes people be so ridiculous. Yeah. It's what makes people be ridiculous with their words and their threats and their bullying, mm -hmm. because, because they're out of connection with true, when you're in connection with true source, you don't feel like bullying anyone. Mm -hmm. You don't make threats. You just mm -hmm. stand in your power and do everything you can to uplift, you mm -hmm. see. So in, in the midst of a, a, a sort of battle with your lover, as you stay in your full power, then there's no battle because there's no threat of you losing your true power. You see, that's why, that's why when you battle with each other and you get defensive, mm -hmm. it's because you've lost your power and now you're fighting against the person that you feel took your power away. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's tricky because when we want to talk about something that's uncomfortable or something that causes tension between us, I don't want to focus on the negativity. But we want, we want I want to, to stay in alignment. We, but well, we want that too for yeah. you. But, but more than that, we want 
there to be nothing to be uncomfortable between you. In other words, there's nothing uncomfortable between your inner being and you. Your inner being doesn't care if you listen to them in your underwear. <laughs> In other words, there, 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 there is no, there, there is nothing that you do that se that causes your inner being to separate from you. There's plenty that you do that causes you to not be in the vibrational vicinity of your inner being. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's, it's no, your, you, you can't get away from your inner being. Your inner being will continue to acknowledge you, to know you, and to love you, mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. It's only your ideas that cause the separation. Yeah. You see. So, and th this is just. This isn't all the time. This is just the times when you do have contrast. So, for example, say she comes home and she's out of alignment and she's upset, and and I try to stay in alignment. So I try to separate myself. Okay. So here's but it the first. So here's the first. But here's the first question that we want to ask you. So she comes home out of alignment, and we're assuming that from your perspective, you were in alignment before she came home out mm -hmm. of alignment. Mm -hmm. So let's say that's the case. That you, that <laughs> that. <laughs> That you are in alignment when she comes home out of alignment. And so when that happens, you, like your inner being, your only intention with her is to help her get back into alignment. But let's say that she's so out of alignment that she's even snarky about you. But if you were really in alignment, you wouldn't take any of that personally. You would just understand that she could use a little talking off the ledge. And you would just continue to love her anyway. You could find her contrast endearing or even of, of value. Mm -hmm. But if you're not really solidly in alignment mm -hmm. and she comes home out of alignment and therefore you see her as a risk to your alignment, that's what makes you defensive. Mm -hmm. So if you are solidly in alignment, then you don't feel that risk and then you don't feel defensive. Mm -hmm. You see what we're getting at? I see. So usually, you don't really rendezvous with anyone who's too far from where you are unless you live with them. In other words, we understand that. <laughs> In other words, if you live with them, they're going to come home no matter at law of attraction, be damned. Uh -huh. In other words, <laughs> they're coming home. They're coming home because that's where their bed is. They're, they're, co they're coming home. And so you just, you just have to be ready for them to come home, mm -hmm. which means you have to, you have to be in alignment with yourself. And when you're in yeah. alignment with yourself, then there's value in everything that you see. When yeah. you're not in, in alignment with yourself, then you need everything to be the way you need it to be yeah. in order to what you erroneously in a flawed premise way think will support your alignment. Mm -hmm. You do not owe it to each other to be in alignment. And when you feather somebody else, else's nest when you are so in alignment that 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 they just they use you for their inner being then there are going to be testy times because nobody can stand in that solid place of being the support like the inner being is for anybody else mm -hmm. and yet you do that to each other all the time mm -hmm. you you want each other to be the way you need them to be in order to feel good and when they're not then they're doing something wrong and that, that isn't how it is. Contrast is your strength. It is. I see the beauty in contrast. It's actually easier for me when she's in alignment and I'm out of alignment. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. Everyone likes those who are easy to love. The easy to want love ones you think are your greatest benefit, but they are not. We're not asking you. We don't want you to be nice to each other from an out of alignment. We don't want you to fake it. We want you, Esther saw an advertisement in a magazine years ago, Jerry and Esther were on an airplane, and it was a, a, a hotel ad. And the ad said, we don't hire people and tell them to be nice. We hire nice people. <laughs> because you can't make anybody be nice if they're out of alignment. And so Esther assumed that what the ad was saying is, we hire people who are in alignment. We hire people who, who know about stay, who's, who it's, it's become their nature to want to feel good. Well, life keeps coming at you. This is the thing that we want you to acknowledge, embrace, and, and be all right with. Life is going to keep coming at you because there are so many variables. And you just want your shock absorbers to be ready to enjoy, not deal with, not cope with, mm -hmm. not tolerate. We want you to enjoy life as it comes. Because every time another piece of it comes, it comes in answer to a request for expansion that you have set out there. Every bit of it. 
So when something comes that feels a little uncomfortable, what it is is posing the question, which you're putting in the vortex, which will attract the answer, which you, if you're one of the cooperative components, then when you get to move toward the answer of your own question or toward the solution to your own problem, you get to experience the growth expansion that you're all about, you see. It's so interesting to us. We love you so much, but so, so many humans really think that they just want life to just be this perfect way so they can just observe it and feel good. And we promise you that will never be. And that's why you stir so much trouble up. <laughs> you, you, you look for problems because it's so satisfying to find solutions and because problems and solutions, that is the equation for expansion. Mm -hmm. Question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. That's the, that's the formula for expansion, which is the mantra of that which we all are. We are eternal beings. And if we are not expanding, we are really done and we will never be done. So you can't stop expanding. So you might as well embrace your mm -hmm. expansion, which means understand how expansion comes. So when you understand how expansion comes, then just because something's not perfect, you don't freak out and condemn it and, and, uh, and be rude about it. When something, you embrace it, you appreciate it, you feel thankful for it, you feel satisfied that it exists. And then you live happily ever after with so many other others who have differences in desires and opinions and beliefs so next because time. no one is a threat to you other than your own split energy and it's not really a threat it's just an irritation so next time i should be baby i'm so glad you're mad at me <laughs> no i'm just being silly well no, no, no that's not that's not silly but there's a but there's a there's a more beneficial to you approach there mm -hmm. because because i it, it, it may or may not be that you're so glad that she's mad at you. But what you really want to say is, I'm so glad that this situation has been focused upon and has produced a new desire in me to which I will enjoy moving toward. Mm -hmm. It's so fun to move toward things. That's, we'll say it again, 100% of all satisfaction comes from a new desire that you're moved, from a desire, it doesn't have to be new. But we want to say new because if you've got this down, desire you move toward it, so you need another new one. In other words, you're, you're not, you don't ever get it done. So you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. What you do want isn't your most active vibration, what you don't want usually is. But it's the most active vibration for your inner being, so it's calling you. So you have to adjust into the new desire because the situation that produced it is what's most active in you. Yes? Isn't that the way it is? What is is what's most active in you. So now you care about the alignment. So you look toward it. You find the feeling place of it. You do some of the things that we've talked about here and you find the vibrational alignment to the desire and oh, it feels so good as it clicks into place. Aha. And then once you've found the vibrational alignment, now the manifestation happens too. So you ask for it, you lined up with it and now it manifested. And now you're standing in a whole new place with a whole new set of contrasting experiences producing whole new desires. Yay, I'm still alive. <laughs> and then you line up with that, it clicks into place, it manifests. Now you're standing in a whole new place with a whole new set of contrasting desires. And what's the, the flawed premise that so many humans live by, even those who've been listening to us for a while, is that once I get that, I'll stand in this place and now my work is done. <laughs> and we say, if your work could ever be done, then your satisfaction could be done too. Because if somebody or something doesn't stir up a new desire to which you are moving toward, you're not going to find any satisfaction because satisfaction comes only from moving toward the desire. Yes. You don't have to close the gap completely to be satisfied. You just want to be moving toward it. You can't be moving in opposition to it. And you move in opposition to it when you're defending where you came from. When you think that, when you think that there's this pie that you're splitting up and fighting over. It's nothing like that. The universe is expanding in direct and equal proportion to the desires that you produce within each other. So what you want to say is, baby, thank you for producing a new desire within me. A desire for more harmony, a desire for more understanding, but most of all, a desire for the expansion that this, that this whatever it is, is producing. Mm 